Hi guys, it's the Nivs with another video and uh, not doing a reaction video today, just go straight in with a review. And this is the review of Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. And it was okay. It wasn't it wasn't bad. It was it was a good piece of television, to be fair. It got me got me excited straight from the start. I mean, Nikola Tesla and uh, Thomas Edison's, their rivalry is um, something that I personally did um, a review on when I was at school. Um, so I wrote a paper on it as part of an English exam once uh, because I was a bit of a geek when I was at school. I suppose I sort of still am now. But that's another story. Um, just a few things I just want to mention about the episode first. I'll do pro positives and negatives as I'm going along because I'm just thinking out loud. So, straight away, straight from the start, we had no cold opening again, which was great. Straight into the opening credit sequence. And um, it felt... It, 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 it looked atmospheric, if you like. It looked okay. It's... The only negative I can think, like the like the New York shots um, of the streets and the some of the overhead views, if you like, of, of the streets and the actual labs, seemed a little bit. It's as if there wasn't a lot of money spent on them, if that makes any sense. Like the New York streets just seemed very basic, and you could tell it wasn't. You could tell a million miles away. This is this doesn't feel like New York, and it didn't have that New York of the 1900s attached to it a bit like how the Daleks take Manhattan that look quite atmospheric they use a lot of extras and they spent you know a lot of money on the CGI work um, but this just didn't seem like it just didn't look New Yorky to me if that's actually in a word it so I think that took the edge away from me personally it just you, if you would have said to me, this is a street in Gloucester, or this is a street in Sweden, I would have probably gone, okay, then that, that's it. It wasn't, it didn't feel like 1900s New York. Couple of other things I just want to be a little bit negative about, if I can be. It seems that um, they're letting, every, everybody, everybody is allowed onto the TARDIS now. Everybody. You name it, when the TARDIS lands and everything, it's all right, it's all right, just pop on, it's it's fine. At one point, there were so many people in the TARDIS, it was like, I thought Bill and Ted were going to come out and it was going to land on the school stage to do their um, to, to do their exam, uh, to do their history examination. It was just like, everybody, just come on, just come on, just come on. It was piled in, it was full to the brim, and the amount of people that were in there at the one point, the TARDIS set itself, and when, especially when Tesla actually walked in, he was like, oh, my God, this is massive. And everyone was surrounded by the cons console area while the doctor's doing the work. There's like about five or six other people standing behind you, and it just looked, all you people coming in? And the fact that... They, in the last episode, the Doctor sort of did her mind thing and actually took the memories of that visit away. But to Tesla and Edison, these are two people who could actually potentially, you know, they, they changed history with what they did. But they didn't wipe their minds. The Doctor didn't wipe their minds, but they wiped minds of other people from the last episode. So I just don't understand why um, no minds were, well, sorry, the end of Sky, no, it wasn't, it was the end of Orphan 55, no, it wasn't, it was the end of Sky 4, sorry, see, I need my mind done, so, um, yeah, that was a little bit, uh, one quite, one thing I did quite like, and people saying that it's big, the Doctor Who's becoming a bit, like, uh, woke, if you like, when it's all about the women, and it's girl power, and everything like that, well, I don't know if anybody else has, but over the past few episodes, Ryan is cracking on to every woman that turns up. The only person he hasn't cracked on to yet is the Doctor itself, herself. But right, every woman, he's like going, yeah, all right, love. And she's going, no. And he's like, mm, straight away, like because she went to Tesla. And uh, so straight away, Ryan's going, mm. But straight away, it's like, 
are you doing? Like a bit of a Joey, like, how you doing? Type of thing, and straight away, nope. So we had a mention, at least a mention, and the weapon was quite good of Silurians. Um, so, I mean, obviously they're sort of there, aren't they? They're sort of buried. Um, but the fact that they got a Silurian weapon, how did they get hold of that? I don't actually think we got an answer for that. <coughs> Excuse me, still poorly. So, but um, it was quite good that that was mentioned. It would be interesting to see if there was a 30 second, 20 second montage of maybe how that weapon came to light. I would have liked to have seen that personally. Alas, no, didn't get it, but that's fine. Just a quick just interlude here and just completely changing the subject. Just for two seconds, that's all I want, just two seconds of your time. Um, uh, people are still moaning about Jodie Whittaker as being the Doctor. I actually saw something the other day and uh, I'm not even going to promote it on here, but actually i can't remember the article um but somebody commented um that uh what was the what was it now it was something like that whittaker woman will no not will never be my doctor that whittaker woman they called her uh, i just wanted to shed you whether just tell you something that pops into my head in my little stupid little brain for several years, soap operas have been on television. No matter what country you're in, there is a soap opera. Now, eventually, over time, a character on these soap operas will outgrow that particular character. So, you might get a character who plays a 13-year-old a girl or a 13-year-old boy for five years, and then that said character will all right i'm going to brighton for a few weeks love all right well I'll see you later five years later that character will reappear as a 24 year old for example and it's played by a completely different character and nobody bats an eyelid they'll go oh oh i get it now that's that's charlotte can who went to Spain five years ago, or, oh, that's, that's Michael Window, who went to Brighton to get a new job, but he's back now. They'll automatically accept it. And these are from TV shows that have lasted like 30, 40, 50 years, soap operas. They're on every single day. And still, the small-minded Doctor Who community, some of the Doctor Who community, but I'll just say the small-minded ones out of the Doctor Who community, because I will say that, can't get their head around the fact that the character itself is designed to change. It's not like a soap opera character. This person will come back and nobody bats an eyelid in soaps, but this is a character designed to change and who just come back as different people, as a different person, and people can't accept it for the fact that this character is a lady. Hmm. So... Anybody out there who watching this and disagrees with me, let's say if your partner watches soap operas and you think it's, what are you watching this crap for? But then you watch Doctor Who, which is essentially like a soap opera in itself. It's been going a while and there's a different storyline and that type of thing. But the character changes. It's type of it's like that, and I think you know where I'm going with this. And I just wanted to put that out there. Let's just carry on. They didn't the the episode itself. It just didn't. Even though it did go, and there was the story. I just personally, I thought the story was told well. I liked the story. But just the whole feel of it. I think this was. I'm I'm thinking this is one of their cheap episodes of, you know what I mean, this is an episode that didn't really, like a filler episode, I think this is how it feels to me anyway. It just didn't feel like, I mean it was, it felt like an episode of Doctor Who and it was, but I think overall when it comes to cinematography, uh, uh, I thought the actors were great, but cin cinematography wise, the way it was filmed, it just felt a little cheap. To me, um, 
I'm not I'm not saying it was bad because I really didn't think it was bad. And some of the transitions from going from one scene to another was um, easily done. Like that. Do you know what I mean? I and I made that same transition um, with just use by just using my phone. So um, one quite one thing I did quite like was uh, uh, I think it was I think it was Ryan saying it to Graham saying it uh, no sorry Graham saying well this isn't my first rodeo, um, but the reason for that I think would be that. Um, Graham, played by Bradley Walsh, is well Bradley Walsh in real life, uh, is filming a UK TV show when he's going around the United States with his son, and um, he actually took part in a rodeo um, on a ball where he came off and broke his back. I think he fractured three vertebrae or something in his back, and uh, so so I think that's it. My first rodeo, sure up ride, you know what I mean? You know, it's uh, I think that was a. A little bit of a throwback to where uh, Bradley Walsh himself actually did take part in the rodeo and uh, snapped himself a little bit in half. <coughs> so the um, the there was no real mention to the previous story arcs, uh, especially when it comes to like the timeless child and everything. What happened to Gallifrey? The only real mention was I think is it the um, Skithera? Skith the Scorpion people, the Scorpion Queen itself, the Scythera, I think they were called, um, the Scorpion Queen, anyway, that's what I'm calling her. <laughs> Sorry. It, the only thing that was really mentioned was when the um, Scorpion Queen turned around and says, well, have you ever seen a dead planet? And the Doctor was like, you've got no idea what I've seen, love. I think I've seen, like, pretty much, you get me. It was the only real mention of it. I think a story arc, and I think I've mentioned this before, but a story arc that takes two series, um, one, two, three series, or seasons, whatever you want to say, to actually get to where it's going to is long enough. If you are going to keep the audience occupied, I think you want to just have a couple more Easter eggs in there, at least just one Easter egg to keep the audience just ticking over and guessing. Yes, I think this is a filler episode where I've, I don't think that, you know, the whole... Time of Child thing would have uh, would have fit in there in the, in the story, but a mention or a brief little so the audience are going okay. Oh, so they haven't forgot about that. Hopefully, they will get that next week in the Jadoon episode, which was briefly just shown at the end of this one. So you know, I think um, I ho I'm hoping that they haven't forgotten about that and they do keep the audience entwined into what's going on with that potential story arc. Overall, I'm going to give this episode a seven. Out of ten, story wise, it was good. It was just everything else um, that you know wasn't too good. It just the feel of it, and I thought it was a bit was a bit cheap. Yes, I think it was a filler episode, like I've already said, but I think they could have done a little bit more with the whole feel of it, make it look a little bit New Yorky, um, um, give some of the background. Actors will get more background actors. I think they had about three all in all, and, and I think they were the same person with just a different makeup on. I'm only joking, but possibly, but that's how it looked in from my perspective. Story not bad, actors good. I think that was the only thing that held it together for the actual story and the way the actors were and interacting with each other and the story itself, script wise, it was good. It was just everything else just looked a bit. Mm. Do a bit more. I thought the um, um, Scythera's ship, um, the Scorpion Queen ship. I thought that was quite a nice touch, like a like a mismatch of um, everybody else's technology rolled into one. And I thought that was quite nice. But overall, I thought the episode was okay. Let me know what you guys think. Please leave your comments below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you to the new subscribers that had. Awesome, pleased to meet you. I'm the Nivs. How you doing? Leave a comment below, come and say hi. And uh, yeah, hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up because it means a lot. Right. <sighs> Next week's video will be a little bit late. It'll probably out on the Monday because um, I'm going out. I'm going out on Saturday. Um, in fact, the next couple of videos will probably be out on a Monday because I've got a lot of things going on at the moment. Next Saturday, 
there's a UK TV show called um, Emma Dale. Now, as you, you guys who have subscribed to me, you probably know that I've been to the exterior sets before in the past. I'm actually going on a studio tour to the actual studios itself because I'm into how TV's made, so I'm going there. I'll try and document as much as I can on that, and I'll put it um, on this channel. Uh, probably on, yeah, I'll put it somewhere on this channel anyway. And um, apart, apart from that, yeah, it's all good. So next week, it'll probably be out on the Monday. I want myself to watch Doctor Who live for the first time in ages. What am I going to do? Never mind. Take it easy, guys. Don't forget to do what you need to do. And twiddle pip. See you soon.